I wanted to follow up on you were talking about this budget sequester. It's, it's sort of a showdown looming. Uh, do you think the president's reelection, does that give him an upper hand in terms of this showdown? Because we're also hearing from Republicans that some of them seem very determined to let these mandated cuts go into effect. It's really pretty stunning in many ways that a set of cuts that both sides uh, signed on to uh, back when uh, the debt limit was uh, a, a predominant issue uh, as a, a blunder bus, basically, to force them to come together and act, where, which nobody wanted to actually happen. Now we've seen the political dynamic shift, and especially a number of conservatives in and out of Congress, the Wall Street Journal editorial page, talk show hosts like Rush Limbaugh, are saying, bring it on, let's do the sequester. And the basic underlying theme is, we're going to get a huge set of budget cuts. Uh, we're not going to get them any other way. Big deal if they hurt, let's make it happen. Uh, what we're seeing is one of a rolling set of confrontations ahead. We go from the sequester to another showdown over government spending. The current fiscal year's appropriations have not been done. Money runs out in a matter of weeks. And Republicans, many of them, are threatening a shutdown of the government unless the president bends to their will on spending cuts and drops the idea of tax increases. Then we're going to get another uh, debt limit, uh, 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 debt ceiling being reached. Uh, the president has the upper hand in many objective ways. His approval rating is high. Congress's approval rating is low. Republicans in Congress have a particularly low approval rating. Americans don't want these things to occur. There's a consensus among the experts out there that a sequester could take a fragile economy that's starting to recover and send us back into recession, and a sequester could mean the loss of 750,000 jobs. But for Republicans in Congress, frankly, especially those in the House of Representatives, this broader public opinion and the broader political dynamic is of less significance to them. In their districts, what they're hearing is, bring this president down, take him on, cut the budget, do all of these things. And partly it's because uh, they're fearful of a primary challenge, which would be dominated by their uh, constituents who are over on the bedrock right. And what their constituents read every day is the Wall Street Journal editorial page. What they listen to is Rush Limbaugh on radio. Then they get emails and social media reinforcing all of these things. So they're immune to these larger pressures. And the real danger here is that we could reach a confrontation and have uh, some serious damage done that ultimately will be uh, probably dealt with. But in the meantime, the damage will be there and it will be long lasting. Let me just a quick follow up on that. And that is, what is the political risk here for Republicans? Is there a risk? You were pointing out why they're doing what they're doing. But is there a broader political risk at stake here for them? There's, there's definitely a broader political risk. And it's a risk that first, uh, a political process where Americans in the past have been inclined to believe that it's everybody's fault. We'll turn to one where they more clearly shift the blame to Republicans. Now, that's not going to be something felt by most Republicans, but independents and Democrats uh, would make up a supermajority of Americans who would put the blame squarely on them. And the damage to a potential presidential candidate down the road, to Republicans running for the Senate, and they have many opportunities next time and a real hope that they could gain the six seats in 2014 that would give them back a majority in the Senate, this could be damaging to them. But we have to keep in mind that some of those Republicans who are in the leadership uh, themselves are up in 2014. And if you're Mitch McConnell, the Senate Republican leader, you're a little fearful of a challenge from the right in your primary. If you're John Cornyn of Texas, you're fearful of a challenge there. More important, in the House of Representatives, uh, the way the seats have been gerrymandered and the way the districts are basically drawn because of 
uh, residential patterns, uh, Republicans are very unlikely, unless there's a huge backlash, to lose their majority in the House of Representatives. What most of our models tell us is that Democrats would have to win 56 or 57 percent of the two-party vote nationwide to win enough seats to take a majority in the House. Now, that's in an evenly divided country. That would be extraordinary. And remember that in the 2012 elections, Democrats won a majority of the popular votes cast for the House nationwide, but Republicans retained their majority in the body. So if you're sitting there in the House, you may be mildly fearful that there could be a huge backlash. But the bigger risk for most of those members is the backlash from their own right wing, not from a broader public uh, uneasiness with the direction they're going.